Hey, it's Bill, and you're tuned in to the Pennsylvania Rock Show, featuring the best unsigned rock and metal that Pennsylvania has to offer right here on parockshow.com, megarockradio.net, 107.1 FM, St. Louis, Missouri, altrockradio.ca in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the beaches of San Diego, California, on Rudaroo Radio, across the pond at xrpradio.co.uk. That's Birmingham, you know, where Ozzy's from. Uh, <laughs> uh, Buildascene.com, right here in the thriving metropolis of Leechburg, Pennsylvania. And I'm sure I forgot someone because I always tend to do that. <laughs> this is episode number 573 of the Pennsylvania Rock Show. And with me tonight is Chelsea Rittenauer. What's up, Chelsea? Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Like, kind of tired, but you know, I'm here. I'm awake. <laughs> I'm alive. <laughs> from 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 our pre-show conversation, I get it. <laughs> yes, twins, twins. <laughs> um. Oh, something I, I I didn't mention. The um gentleman behind me playing the bass and screaming there. <laughs> Yes. Um, I usually mention, I, I changed backgrounds. That is Chris Owak from the band Doppler Effect. Um, well, hello, sir. <laughs> they are a southern rock band from um, kind of this area. They're, they're like Apollo, um, Pittsburgh suburbs. <laughs> but anyway, so let's start off with the announcement you meet recently made that you are going to be fronting a rock band. Yeah. What, what finally. Can you <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe the, the single that you're working on and the name of the band are one in the same, correct? Correct. Yes. Kind of um, happened by accident, but yes. <laughs> um, it is the fall of me. Yes. And um, I'm going to ask that cliche question, which is, where did that band name come from? So Paul, who is our lead guitarist, um, him and I had wanted to work together for a while. And honestly, I cannot remember why we decided to meet up uh, earlier this year. I, I think I had a gig or something going on and I needed a guitarist. And we were rehearsing and... After rehearsing, he started showing me some like melodies and some riffs that he had, and we just started writing this song. Um, usually what I do is I just start scatting over whatever melody line I hear and mess around with the vocals, and that's what I did. And then I sat down and I started coming up with lyrics, and the song ended up being called The Fall of Me. And we didn't know if we were going to do anything else, if it was just going to be that one song, if we were going to continue with it. And we ended up just continuing organically and we started kicking around a name. And he was like, hey, I mean, the first song that we wrote is called The Fall of Me and sounds kind of cool. So what do you think? And it just stuck and we stayed with it. So, yeah. Now is, is it just you and Paul or are there other other members no. as well so it's myself paul on the guitar donnie on bass and then we have uh we have someone playing drums he's like how would i describe this he's not really a permanent member he's like semi-permanent um he's in another group uh called haven state i don't know if you've ever talked to them i i have yeah, so it's it's Luke Martusi. We just had a conversation with him not too long ago. So he's going to be doing all of the drums whenever we record our EP. And he was basically like, yeah, I'll be like your man for hire. And, you know, whenever you have live gigs, um, you know, I will I can be there uh, as long as it doesn't interfere with, you know, anything that Haven State has going on, which is his main project. Um, so I guess we'll call him like a semi-permanent member. I don't know. I, Haven State was one of the bands that I found out about from um, DI Records. Um, okay. That's um, Dakota, and I'm not even going to attempt to say his last name, but um, Dakota runs DI Records, and he sends a lot of bands my way, and uh, that was one of many. <laughs> yeah. I think they, they just made an announcement that they're um, releasing some new stuff 
So um, yeah, whenever we came across him, we were we were super excited that he was willing to jump on board and help us out because we were having a hell of a time finding a drummer. I am um, Chip from Chip and the Charge Ups. I yeah. just I just watched a video that he did on um, his Facebook about them um, creating drum tracks, professional drum tracks for your songs because it's cheaper to do it that way than to than to hire someone to record for you. Yeah. Um, so if anybody's looking for that option, contact Chip. <laughs> I was I'm so I was supposed to actually meet them because they were they were supposed to be on Music Talks last year and then COVID and happened and everything was an absolute mess and then we tried to re- like get in touch to reschedule him for this year and then unfortunately Music Talks is now canceled which that's a whole other conversation but um uh, well we we were going to bring that up so we'll get there, we'll get there <laughs> but yeah I was supposed to meet Chip and all those guys and I never got to so uh, hopefully I, I will get to meet them in the near future I've um, chatted with them a few times at Island Community Park for Rock for Life. Um, Melina tried to convince me to dye my my goatee pink. Oh, that didn't happen. <laughs> Why not? Go for it. You gotta live. Well, see, it was August, and I teach at a Catholic school. Oh, okay. And right. hair color, right, right, right. hair, hair color has to be natural. <laughs> so that would have meant I would have to shave my goatee off to start school year. And fair enough, understood. <laughs> but um, so let's, you know, let, let's, you know, I'm gonna hold off on music talks. Um, Pause. where, where did music start for you? Like, can you pin down a point where you're like, that's what I'm going to do? Um, well, I've always, I've always done it. So I I don't know if you know any of this uh, about me. So, um, I used to be an opera singer, like legitimately, um, all of my degrees are in music. I I have a master's in vocal performance. Um, I have a bachelor's BFA from Carnegie Mellon vocal performance, and then a master's from Manus also vocal performance. So like, I've always done it. I started training classically whenever I was 12 um, or I had just turned 13, one of the two. And prior to that, I just always sang like you couldn't get me to shut up. And so I think, I think it was just inevitable, you know, like that's what I was going to do. It's um, it was always my thing from a very young age. And then I was crazy enough to decide to major in it. (laughs) I'm (laughs) My my son just took his first, tr- well, not his first trumpet lesson. He's playing, been playing a trumpet for years, but he yeah. took his first trumpet lesson today with a new teacher who's a trumpet professor at Pitt, oh. and, and he just turned thirteen. That kind of yeah. lined up with what you were saying, and um, I mean, start him young. He's also um, going to be. I can't remember. Where, <laughs> it's this week. It's terrible. My brain is fried. But um, he's also. Yeah, yeah. Um, going to be um, working with the Pittsburgh Brass Band. Oh my God, that's amazing. Good for him. That's and fantastic. Then, and then my daughters also play. They play um, the clarinet and the flute. I was going to um, say clarinet. I knew I knew you were going to say that. Um, Emmeline actually started with the clarinet and switched to flute. Mm-hmm. And um, Bria... Hmm clarinet yeah (laughs) see that's what you're going to come into as it gets further into the percussion i'm gonna forget (laughs) and luckily when when they were little emeline had a little mark on her nose (laughs) you could tell them apart (laughs) i put i put anklet bracelets with their initials on my boys that's how i did it well the hospital clues you in they just don't tell you they do when they name them baby a and baby b (laughs) oh yeah oh yeah Mm mm-hmm (laughs) <laughs> um so do you do you play any instruments or has it always been about vocals for you um i mean i dabble I, um i mean i i obviously can read music very proficiently if i have to play something on the piano i can whenever i was younger i took guitar lessons um if i was forced to pick up the guitar again i could probably do you know your basic chords but honestly my main focus was always vocals and i and i I dived in real deep <laughs> with all of that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's like, that's my specialty. And 
as you know, I also, I teach, I'm a voice teacher too. So uh, that was going to be my next question. Yeah. Um, so if someone wanted to take lessons with you, how, how would they go about that? So, um, in January, I started working with a company called, um, uh, practice makes perfect music studio. So if you are interested in taking voice lessons or you just want to learn more about me and, and what I do and how I teach, you can either hop onto their Facebook page, their Instagram, or I believe our website is now up as well. And you can check everything out. We have voice teachers. We have all kinds of other instruments, dance teachers. Um, we're really growing it. Well, at least Aaron is. Aaron Gray, he's the one that started the company. He's fantastic. Um, but you can request to study voice with me, and they'll get you in touch with me, and we'll go from there. And um, where, where is the studio located? So that's the cool thing. Um, I teach out of my home or I teach via Zoom. So our teachers are everywhere. We're all over the place. So, um, you know, someone can come to me directly here in Connellsville or I had a student for a while that lived in California and we did, we did lessons over Zoom. So... Yeah, we can do the online thing or in person at my home studio. Um, so I, I also noticed that you have been, I don't want to word this, you've been in New York. I want to say that I saw California in there somewhere. Um, That's a, was was that yeah. all in the pursuit of, of following the, the music or... Yeah. If it isn't, you can tell me, you can say that. No, it was, it was, it was all for work. It was all for gigs. It was all for vocals, for music. Um, I worked in Germany for a while as well. Um, some of it was strictly for the opera stuff. Like before I crossed over into um, contemporary music. So like whenever I was working in St. Louis, I was with opera theater, St. Louis, and it was all classical music and you know opera uh whenever i was in germany that was all opera california was whenever i had transitioned so yeah i've i've uh I've been a few places and, and and sang some cool spots um i assume that that kind of <laughs> that like first of all being um in different genres you can take parts from one and move it over to to the other but yeah. also living in all those different places probably has affected your your uh, background musically as well um yes and no i mean i've always i've always kept my my roots and had a very strong sense of what i liked and who i was um which um I think I have to I have to attribute all of that to my mom because whenever you know I was a young kid growing up, she played tons of rock music, and so I was always I was always a rocker chick at heart. Um, I just kind of got thrown into the opera thing because I had a really high, pretty voice, and people didn't know what to do with me, and so opera was the best fit. But if I'm being completely honest, like I always wanted to sing contemporary music. I always wanted to sing rock music. I am. Um, I chuckled when you said that my parents listened to country and um, thankfully my mom's brothers listened to rock. <laughs> there we go. Because that's where that came from. <laughs> my mom was all over the board. She was like, she's very eclectic with her music tastes and she was very, very good at introducing myself and my brother to tons of different genres. I mean, I think the woman knows every song imaginable, you know, what, isn't there a TV show like, like name that tune or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She'd probably win it. <laughs> Here, here's a little known fact that I probably haven't said in 503 episodes, which is amazing. Cause I repeat stories. My mm -hmm. mom was the lead singer of a band. <laughs> really? Yes, she was a church band, but a band. <laughs> what a band! Good for her. That's fantastic. And um, she now claims that she, she can't sing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's wrong, of course. She just doesn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, my, her. She was one of eleven kids, and it's one at most points. One they they were all in the band at some point, doing something different. But she sang and she played the tambourine. <laughs> I love it. You always then, need a tambourine. You need a good tambourine. 
and then my my uncles that they got me hooked on rock they were they played guitar <laughs> yes of course of course uh, and my and another uncle who was the bass player and you know they were my, they my uncle jokes about it all the time he, like he, he's like we're getting a band back together I like the blues brothers <laughs> <laughs> why not it's never too late <laughs> Well, probably not right now because he is a mechanic and he owns two Kona ice trucks. So it'd be hard to, to gig. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. Um, so now I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a PA rock show question now. Oh God. <laughs> um, if <sighs> you've probably heard this one, cause you said you listened to some recent ones. Um, <laughs> If if you were sitting on a bench, we're going to do the uh, the force gump question. If you're sitting on a bench and you're there for like an hour and uh-huh. um, you're sitting next to your music idol, who's going to be sitting there? And you're allowed to ask them one question. So you need to ask them a question that will keep them talking clearly, but that you can learn from. Who Who would you sit by, hope to sit by, and what would you ask them? This can be any artist, right? Any anybody, artist. Anybody. All right. I wouldn't I wouldn't say she's like my all time favorite singer, but this is a singer that like, you know, as I've been diving into more rock vocals I've come across. Um, this chick named Lauren Babick, she um has a killer rock voice and she does all of these those really like low, like uh chesty growls which is something that I've been trying to figure out how to do, but without dis- absolutely and, yeah. like, destroying yeah. my vocal cords. Um, I mean, I know how to add some distortion without hurting myself. And I do. And you'll hear that in our EP when it comes out later this year. Um, but I'm talking like the true, like metal growls. That's something that I'm still messing around with and she does it. So I would want to ask her how the hell she does it. <laughs> and, and show me and teach me and I'll figure it out in probably a half hour, but just like, tell me. <laughs> yeah. Um, here we'll stick with movie themes. Yeah. You, okay. you, fi- you find a DeLorean okay. and you're going to head back in time without breaking the space time continuum. Cause we don't want to get yelled at. Sure. Um, <laughs> what band would you go follow around to learn from or artist? So yeah, you, know, you can spend spend a year back back in in the, in time and learn from, pick their brain, just party with them, what whatever. Who would you want to hang out with? Prince. That was that was a lot faster than I expected. Oh yeah, why Prince? Prince? Why Prince? Because he's he's super iconic. He um I feel like he crossed over into a lot of different genres, but he still stayed in the vein of who he was, whatever that was. It, you know, it was always him. Um he seems like a hell of a good time and he was he put on a show. I mean, that man was a performer. And I think there's a lot, you know, to be, to be learned from that. It's one thing to be a good singer, but I think it's another thing to be a true performer and actually entertain people. And that's what he was. Um, stick, sticking with movies, you get to pick um, any musician in, in the history of the world to portray in a documentary. Who would you want to portray? What I want to. Well, I get compared to her all the time, which is kind of annoying to me because, I mean, I can sound like her, but I think it's just because we come from the same type of training. So it would be easy. Probably Amy Lee, just because everybody compares me to her. So like... Let's just roll with it. <laughs> I saw I saw one put somebody put that on a comment of you singing a cappella. <laughs> I really don't sound like maybe I do. I, uh, whatever. And you know what? They're super famous. And if people want to compare me to Evanescence, then fine. <laughs> but um, I'm not trying to sound like her, and I'm not trying to write like them. Um, 
it just is what it is. So I don't know. All right, th this next question, um, I always preface with, um, it is Christina Sanavica's fault from the Shadow Project. Do you, are you familiar with her? No, I'm not. Okay. Well, make sh make sure you check them out. <laughs> okay, I will. All right. And the reason I preface it is because it's even more off the wall than the stuff that I ask normally. Um, okay. So her question is, if they were going to put you in a cartoon series as a cartoon, what character would play you? Like like a cart <laughs> like a cartoon character that's out now. Yes. Oh. Um. Oh my god! I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know what just popped into my mind, and I have no idea why. Because I probably because I'm a '90s kid. I'm like right now. My mind is going to like the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like a combo of of wait, which one was the green one? Buttercup. I'm like a combo of Buttercup and Bubbles. Yeah. I, I'm not all that familiar with them, so we'll, we'll go with it. <laughs> My childhood. <laughs> I was a decade before you. Yeah. <laughs> a little more than a decade, but we'll go with a decade. <laughs> No, I don't think I'm sexy enough to pull it off. But like, maybe like a like a, a a kind of dolled down Jessica Rabbit, like without the boobs. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I, someone recently said to me, with them remaking all these these movies and turning them into cartoons, what would they do with that movie? Because they would have to turn Jessica Rabbit into a human who would play her. <laughs> Right, I don't, I don't know who would play her. I really don't. That that would be tough. It would. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. Let's say that um, the fall of me goes on an international tour. Okay. And I tag along. Mm -hmm. And I'm in charge of the music that's being played while we're traveling between shows. Okay. What artists should I make sure I have on hand? Honestly, anything from the 90s grunge era, I'm good with. That's like my go-to. Um, give me a bunch of, bunch of like Alice in Chains. Yeah, I'd be cool with that because I love their harmonies and I learned how to sing a lot of harmonies by listening to them. So, yes. So off there, I mentioned Staley's Comet to you. you yes. Need to, you need to check them out. They're, I will. Yeah. They're an Alice in Chains tribute band. That yeah, I was going to say, I, yeah. I, I have heard of them. Um, somebody mentioned them to me. It was right before COVID hit. Um, maybe they were like playing somewhere and they wanted me and I was, I was pregnant and I couldn't, I couldn't go. But yeah, I've definitely heard of them. I will check them out more. Yeah. He's, he also, he's in another, um, tribute band for them in Florida. Um, I'm, I can't remember their name, but like he travels to Florida, and the rest of the band is. He from does Florida. it. Yeah. Very cool. Very very cool. Um. So, if <laughs> see, I have this pandemic question that I can't ask yet. Um, Why? Well, because the question is, um. It kind of, I, I came up with the question before the pandemic, but it fits it perfectly. Okay. It's if there was a um, apocalyptic event that took out most of the human race mm -hmm. and there's a handful of humans left and their job is to repopulate the earth, which one of your songs would help with the repopulation? Let's see? <laughs> like none of them, because I don't write happy songs. It is impossible for me to write a happy song. Don't ever. I mean, I can, I can write happy songs for other people. Like I'll write, I, I'll write songs for other people that can be happy. I'll write love songs for other people, but like something for me personally to like actually sing and write for like my band, you're not going to get a happy song for me. <laughs> so probably none of them, unfortunately, not none, zero. <laughs> um, Right, I'm going to ask you the Diesel Beast question, and then we're going to take a break. 
<laughs> so Diesel Beast is a band out of Denton, Texas. Um, one of the handful of bands that are not from Pennsylvania that have been on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I asked them this question. They were the very first band I ever asked it to. And their answer got it named a Diesel Beast question. <laughs> Okay. Um, if you could play with any band in the history of the world, like open for them, who would you want to open for? And if if you could play in any location on the earth, where would you want to play? And keep in mind, like Metallica has played at the South Pole, so it can be anywhere. Right. <sighs> You know what? I'd really like to go back to Germany and German people, they love live music and they also love, um, they love rock music and they love like production type rock music. And, you know, being that I'm classically trained and I'm going to get pigeonholed with like Evanescence and the band I'm about to mention, Nightwish, Nightwish somewhere in Germany. Austria, like over in that area, I can work on my German again (laughs) and not be such a (laughs) dumb American. And um, I won't have to worry about being like overly heavy to try to fit in with like super heavy metal guys. So yeah, (laughs) win-win. So their answer and the reason it's named after them is they want to play at Stonehenge with Dio. Yeah, that's a good one. So I was like, okay, it's gonna be hard for anybody to top that. That's your question now. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, so we're gonna take a short break and uh, we will be back with Chelsea and some more questions. And for those of you that are watching live, this is normally where I tell you that we're gonna play music that the uh, guest um, has provided, but their EP isn't done yet. You said about mm-hmm. six six months. Um. I, less than that. We're gonna be in this. We're gonna be in the studio in in two months, and I, I, I'm thinking probably about four or five months. Everything should be out. Yeah. And um, you will be able to hear it here on Build the Scene, but just not yet. Not quite yet. We're getting there. Oh, uh, I should have did a little more homework. So while we're live, I'm gonna go figure out which two songs I'm gonna play right now. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. New music folder. <laughs> Little dead air. Oh, man. I have my hands on the new Royal Honey stuff, but it's not released yet, so I can't play Royal Honey yet. <laughs> Um, let's see. I played Grey Walker. I don't remember if I played Transcendence new song. We'll play. We'll do that. We'll play Pangea by Transcendence, which is metal, but I don't think it sounds like their older stuff. So we'll play some Transcendence, and maybe we'll play. Hmm. I don't know who I feel like playing. <laughs> oh, we'll play um, Carcass, which is kind of like rap and metal at the same time. <laughs> so, all right. So now we're going to come back in and I'll say that that's what we listened to. <laughs> you ready? Yep. All right. Hey, we're back on the Pennsylvania Rock Show episode number 573. You just heard Pangea uh, by Transcendence, brand new song by them. And we also played a track from Carcass, K-A-R-K-I-Z-Z. Um, that song is called Brace for Impact. And with me tonight is Chelsea Rittenauer from... Um, <laughs> I messed that up. See, this is why we're good at editing. Um, <laughs> try that again. With me tonight... Is Chelsea Rittenauer from The Fall of Me. Um, it's weird for me to be interviewing you before the music is out. It happens occasionally. But yeah. I, I think that's why it's I can't get the band name to stick in my head yet. Sure, sure. <laughs> I've, I've been posting a couple of teasers here and there. I have a separate Instagram account 
which is just Chelsea vocals where like you can find videos of me singing uh, some of the original stuff that we've written just like acapella or with um, acoustic guitar, me and Paul. And then I have, I put up covers and then I also put up um, like uh, vocal tips cause you know, voice teacher. So like technique things. So like, if you are really curious, you can hear some of our material, just hop onto my Instagram, which is Chelsea vocals. Um, a few episodes ago on three questions in a song, I interviewed Judy Rodman. Are you familiar mm-hmm. with her? I'm not. Uh, neither was I, which is terrible. And I'm admitting this on the air now. Um, she wrote and performed a number one country song in the eighties. Okay. And then she wrote another one. I think it was for Taylor Swift, which is recently. And Ooh. I d- didn't know this until after I interviewed her. <laughs> What? <laughs> and um, she is currently a, a voice coach as well, which is why that popped into my head. And uh, she actually gave me advice on how to keep my my voice working well while I'm teaching. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I could. I I could also. So if you if you're ever curious or like you feel like you're starting to lose your voice, message me. I got you. <laughs> um. Okay. So in the first segment, we kind of talked a little bit about music talks, and um, you mentioned it that it has been canceled but yeah. why don't you i mean because it's still on youtube so people can go back and look at it oh yeah in yeah. fact i have already embedded one of the videos um in the show notes um it is okay. the the black ridge episode yes. um, <laughs> so yeah. why, don't, why don't you give everybody an idea of, of what they're going to see when they click play on that like what is the show about how you know what was its premise so um, I was contacted by a guy named Rick Fike, who um, does all of the TV programming for Armstrong. Um, it's now Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Um, and he had this idea for a TV show um, that would highlight local musicians. Uh, he wanted to do an interview and then he wanted to have them do um, a music segment in he was like, but I have no idea how actually how to put it together or what questions to ask. Like, I don't want to be the one doing the interviews. I'm not a musician, blah, blah, blah. So him and I didn't know each other prior to doing this show. And people kept mentioning my name to him because I was back in the area after being away for a good many years. And um, he messaged me. I thought it sounded interesting. We met up. Um, he gave me his idea. I ran with it. Um, I actually am the one that came up with a name. I had a list of like five names for him and he chose music talks, but um, that was, that was one of my ideas for a name. And I just put this post out on social media, told people what we were doing and it kind of just spread like wildfire from there. And um we were packed for our first year. We had no idea what we were doing at first. I mean, it, it, our first episode, I, I don't think it came across as a shit show, but like inside we were like, oh my God, like what do we do? Because we just, you know, it was the first one and we didn't know. Um, our first episode that we filmed was the Andy Davis band, actually. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with them. They're, they're country guys, so... Um, I'm not. <laughs> they're, they're country. I wouldn't. They're they're like. He'll probably be mad at me for saying this. Um, I don't think he describes himself as as outlaw country. I'm sorry, Andy, if you don't. But that's my like best like way to describe what they do. So see, I, I could probably get into that. It's the modern country that I I have no. Yeah, role. I'm not into it. <laughs> I'm not into it either. But like Andy does do. Um, Andy does some cool stuff. And they're pretty prominent in the in the country scene around this area. So he was he was our first band. I, I know him personally from like back in the high school days. So that's how it happened. And we had no idea what we were doing, but like we made it happen. And then we were booked every week. We were filming on Wednesdays and we were booked every Wednesday for the first year, which was amazing. And then season two happened. I just put it back out on social media and people started getting in touch. We started getting Pittsburgh bands and it was just like, wow, this is, this is really amazing. And, um, and then COVID 
and it just screwed everything up. And I was dealing with an absolute mess of a schedule because I did all of the interviews, but I also did all of the scheduling. So like I was the point of contact. Um, I pretty much handled everything about the show except for editing the um, what was filmed and the sound. But everything else I took care of. So I was dealing with an absolute mess. And, um, and then we were scheduling everything for season three and making it happen. And then, you know, um, Rick just had some other personal things that were going on and, and he was unable to make our film day work. And now I have kids, which I didn't have kids, you know, when we first started it and things were just different. And for the time being, we couldn't figure out a day to make it work for myself, for Rick and for our sound crew. And so, you know, he, he, he just decided that we're going to take uh, uh, maybe a hiatus or maybe it'll be done. I don't know. But we unfortunately are not filming any longer and I had to cancel the season. I am um, not exactly that situation, but I, I told you off the air, I, you know, I, I took a hiatus for a little while on this one. Yeah. Um, I, someday I'll go back and figure out what episode number I would be on if I didn't. Or not. <laughs> um, off the air, I'll tell you what got me started back up um, because I thought I was done. But yeah. that's not a story they need to hear again. <laughs> um, all right. So you kind of left it open that there might be a future for it. So if if it is to come back, how would you announce it? Like what should people look for? Well, not, I, have, not, I haven't watched all the episodes, but I've lo- I've watched quite a few of them. Yeah. You know, I'm not really sure. Um, my concern is that if I would try to bring it back and I would put anything out on social media, probably just on my Facebook page um, and let people share it from there. It seemed to work for me that way before. But my fear is that because of, you know, me having to cancel in, in the middle of the season is that, you know, the artists just aren't going to trust us anymore to want to come on and do it because what if we, what if we cancel again? What, you know? And so like, that's my, that's my fear with it. Like, I don't know. Um, If, yeah, if I, if I were to, if if it were to start back up and, and everything worked out perfectly, I would probably just make a post on Facebook and allow all my musician friends to share it with their musician friends and, and let it go from there. That's that's how I book this. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean it, it. It just works. Like you know, we all know so many people who then know other people, and it just, you know, it's how it goes. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to pull up my saved file. I have questions on, and see if there's one in particular that I think I feel like asking tonight. Okay. Oh. <laughs> This is probably the third time I've asked this question. This is how new this one is. Um, let's say that you decide you're going to do a solo album. Okay. And you have to pick a backing band. Okay. But the backing band has to be from the glam rock age. What sure. band? What band is going to back you? Oh. <laughs> The glam rock age. I have to be completely honest. That is like my least favorite era. <laughs> okay, I'll change it. Grunge. What grunge band is going to back you up? <laughs> uh. Oh my. <laughs> they're, they're not from the actual grunge era. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't no hear him. Way. I have heard him and heard someone in in the back, like earlier in the show occasionally, but I didn't hear that one. <laughs> he goes, he goes, see there, yo. And I was like, that's not, they're not from the, like they're post grunge maybe, but they're not from like the actual <laughs> grunge era. <laughs> um, I had mentioned Alice in Chains earlier. I mean, I, I I'm, I'm going to stick with them. I'm, I'm going to stick on that theme. Yeah. Um, yes. So there's there's a podcast that I watch pretty religiously. It's called the 
um, Ludini, Hard Rock, and Metal Circus. And in fact, that's mm-hmm. who's on my hat here. Um, <laughs> I saw that. You were excited about that hat. I was. I was trying to look for a way to bring that up. And, and you opened the door for me. Um, their episode this week that they recorded was about um, guitarists who you don't know have great voices. And Jerry Cantrell made the top 10. Oh, there you go. So um, if you guys aren't familiar with the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus, Rock and Roll, yeah. Metal is in there sometimes when you search it, but it's Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Um, Check it out. It is um, Lou Lombardi, Lily Lily V6, and um, Keith Hawkins are your hosts. Um, Lou has played in quite a few local bands. Um, including Super Monkey, which I'm finding out a lot of people have played in. <laughs> um, and Lily V6 um, is a, um, she hosts her own show on Rock Rage Radio. Um, Keith Hawkins currently lives in New Orleans, but he is a Pittsburgh na- native. He is a pro drummer down there. Um, so you get all kinds of different perspectives on whatever topic they're doing. Um, and it's just, it's fun. I spent Tuesday nights watching that. <laughs> there, easy plug. Also, since we're doing plugs in the chat room right now is Chris Thunderwood, Wolf Dotson. Um, his company, Wolf's Customs, um, sponsors the Build to Scene radio station. Um, they do um, instrument um, resurfacing. They do painting. They do hollow flash. Um, they are out of um, Illinois. Um, you can check them out at wolfscustoms.info. Um, somewhere around here. And I always, I don't know where they went. I have, um, guitar picks that he sent me that have the hollow flash finish on them. It's really cool. Anyway, check them out. Wolfscustoms.info. There, we got some advertising in. Um, there are eight other sponsors of the, of the radio station. Go to buildscene.com slash radio. You can listen to all unsigned music. Like 98% of it is Pittsburgh based. And then the other 2%, it, we're growing now that we're in Europe. <laughs> um, so the other eight sponsors are listed over there. There's Noble Hops Band. There's um, yeah. 97.7 FM's The Grassroots Show. Um, there's, wow, I'm completely blanking now. That's terrible. Um, it's one of those days. D- DI Records. Um, oh, man. Shady Lady Studio. Um, or Shady Lady Productions. Um, wow. I'm going to make it up. I'm going to make a list for next episode and make sure I name them all. <laughs> anyway. All right. So if you... Hmm, I almost didn't ask you the Dave Grohl question. This is the last off-the-wall question. You definitely heard that one. I can even see you light up. <laughs> so... This question is based on the fact that I've been trying to get Dave Grohl to come on the show. And basically I've been completely ignored by everyone and <laughs> including the email I sent to his management. They didn't even reply back and say, leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've made the joke that Brian Johnson drove Evanda's house and he came out and talked to him. So I, <laughs> I tagged Brian Johnson on Facebook and said, how did you get him to answer you? <laughs> You know, ACDC singer, of course, he's going to answer him. Um, Anyway, um, the question is very simple one. It's who's your Dave Grohl, which means what band would you want to leave the audience for and go up on stage and perform with? Because, you know, the Foo Fighters do that a lot. Right, right. (laughs) Oh, my. So what band would I leave the audience for and go perform with? Oh, man. I'm trying to think of, like, artists that I can sing well. Um, You know what? I think they'd be, I think they'd be a wild time. I think they'd be fun. I mean, like, I know they're older now. So maybe they're not as much fun, but I do enjoy singing her material. 
um because i learned a lot from singing her stuff i feel like these are all like cliche artists that i'm bringing up everyone's just gonna roll their eyes but whatever um <laughs> probably hailstorm because i feel like they'd be fun yeah i am um, a, a lot of people have trouble with that question and i get it but what, what i'm really asking and most of the questions that i've asked that are off the wall kind of give me a, your your uh influences they do you're 100 yeah. percent right it's very clever <laughs> <laughs> um hey right. what do we have time wise 45 hey right, let's fit in one more oddball question um not that one i mean i think i'm taking that one off the list um <laughs> It's which is your favorite venue, which which is your least favorite venue, and after the pandemic, we're not putting, we're we're not we're not separating anybody and burning any bridges. Um, nope, <laughs> we're keeping them all alive. Um. Hmm. Oh. What is something that someone that has followed your music career would be surprised to learn about you? Mm. I think the fact that I'm singing rock music now is a shock to people that have followed me from the beginning, you know, because I was always the opera girl. <laughs> that's just, that's what it was. I was the, I was the girl with the pretty voice that could hit the stupid high notes. And, um, yeah, literally people like always called me the opera girl. I remember, <clears throat> Um, Taylor Jenkins, he, um, he's a photographer, a local photographer. He's, he's actually did my most recent photos for me, but, um, back when bar none was still open in Uniontown, um, he was hosting some art events there and, um, he had told Misty, the owner that, uh, that he was going to have me come sing for one of the, um, art galleries. And she was like, what is she gonna sing opera and so it's like that that's what everybody associates with me so um you know if you don't know me personally and you don't know the music that i actually like and you haven't heard me singing this material for honestly since i was a kid um you'd probably be kind of shocked by the stuff that i'm singing now and and what i've been able to um uh, train into my voice as far as like you know distortion and heavier singing goes i am um, jonna and i have a similar issue um everybody thinks first angel media is metal because those are the bands that tend to to yep. contact her and everyone sees me as rock and metal which is part of the reason why we're doing the friendly fire because we can play a vast um with XRP being any genre that enables us to play any genre. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another story I'll tell you off the air. I don't want to <laughs> burn bridges. Um, <laughs> Amen. Um, so where, where can, um, where can we follow um, your, your upcoming, like what's, what's coming up for you? Where, where are they going to be able to, to find your new EP? Um, where are they going to be able to hear the fall of me when it gets released? Um, right. Right. All the good stuff. Right. Okay. So like we, so as of right now, like we do have, everything's being like, we, we're not trying to be super secretive about everything. We just want to have, we want to have all of our stuff in line and try to put as polished and as professional looking a product out there as we possibly can. Um, you know, because being a new band the thing that I've noticed with trying to like pump out original music is people are really reluctant to, uh, to actually listen and share it and, um, you know, actually be supportive. <laughs> Everyone says they are, but like, you know, there's only, there's a small percentage of, of people outside of our, our music click that, that truly are interested in, new music so we're trying to make this as polished as we absolutely can to really catch people's attention so it's unintentionally been a secret but um anyways back to your question um we do have a facebook page it's just not published yet <laughs> and um well you know we're going to be working on a website which i'll be in touch with you soon um 
I have rehearsal with the guys this Sunday and they have the links to everything. So we're going to have a website page where we're going to post a lot of our music, let you hear like teasers. Um, we'll have the Facebook page where we'll probably do the same thing and you'll be able to see, you know, where we're going to be doing shows, et cetera. And, um, and then as, as far as the music is concerned, it's going to be on all of your normal music streaming platforms, you know, like the, the regulars of where you can go to find your material. I, I was waiting for you to open that up with Spotify. For some reason, everybody says Spotify first. I mean, I feel like we all know, like, like you know, the the regular. So, like, yes, Spotify, iTunes, um, you know, all all that good stuff. Yeah. Coincidentally, most of those places you can also find the uh, Pennsylvania Rock Show on as well, including iHeartMedia, which was really hard to get on. <laughs> but anyway. Um, so I, I feel like you probably don't have any shows lined up yet. So if you do, you can nod we, it out. <laughs> we potentially have one in October. Um, Josh from Across the Dawn, are you familiar with them? Yep. He is trying to get a show together. And I actually, I, uh, I, I, I give him, well, not since the pandemic, but before then, I, I would actually give him voice lessons. But um, he's been wanting to perform with me for a while. And I was actually with another group that was supposed to have a lot of material material released. But, you know, COVID and all that, everything fell through. And so we've been trying to do a show together for a while. And he saw that I have this new group. So we may be joining his lineup in October, but that's not 100% set in stone. So what we will do here, we're at the, we're at the end, um, mm -hmm. which means what you're going to hear very shortly is some more of the best unsigned rock and metal that Pennsylvania has to offer. And we will play across the dawn in that, in that grouping. Yeah. Um, and then you will hear Mr. John, the American Hill, Jack Lane, tell you how you can subscribe and where you can Leave comments and all that kind of stuff. And when you hear John, you will know that that is the end of episode number 573. Um, but that doesn't mean that you should leave the radio stations that are graciously playing the show. You should listen to those stations and support the bands that you hear on there. Um, and I always do a caveat with um, 107.1 FM and Mega Rock Radio, which are the same station. Um, you're going to hear uh, more um, signed bands and unsigned bands, but the unsigned bands are there. So now mm -hmm. your job is when this episode ends, you need to sit there and see if you can figure out which one's unsigned because I bet you can't. <laughs> um, Chelsea, I want to thank you for hanging out with us on on the episode. I already said yeah. the number. <laughs> um, My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And uh, for those of you that are checking in on us for the first time, um, this show airs on the every Friday. Um, I almost said the first Friday. Um, that's been a long time since it was just that. Um, every Friday, you can find us at buildascene.com. Um, our other podcast, Three Questions in a Song, is the first and 15th of the month. And then Friendly Fire that we mentioned earlier, which is live on xrpradio.co.uk, is usually the second Saturday at 3 p.m. But in July, it's going to be the third Saturday because the second Saturday is my nephew's birthday. And I can't skip that. <laughs> my my name has been Bill. Uh, with me tonight was Chelsea from The Fall of Me. And uh, we will catch you next week. <laughs>